Hey, welcome to Five Lakes Garage, the place where we have random projects, Jeeps, trucks, food, scouting, knots, woodworking, you name it, we got it. Check them all out. There's like 150 some videos out there. I'm sure there's at least one or two that might suit you. But just wanted to let you guys know that we are still having our contest. It is actually gonna be a giveaway. We, if you are a subscriber, we will, randomly pick on July 4th, 2021, we're gonna give away a flag. We're gonna go ahead and shoot a video on how we're gonna make it. And then one of you, if you're subscribed, will be able to win this prize. So don't forget to subscribe, tell your friends, tell your family, go ahead and subscribe, give you more chances to win. Good luck and let's get on with it. Hey, welcome back to the channel and today we're actually going to go over some safety tips on when you borrow somebody else's trailer this trailer behind me I do not own this this actually belongs to the American Legion down in Fuquay post 116 if you're a veteran if you're a auxiliary if you are a wife spouse of a veteran doesn't make a difference come on down there it is a fantastic organization and you are going to love it they have great amenities they are one big happy family go ahead and check them out so uh, we're getting ready to go for summer camp and by the time this thing airs we're probably going to be back so hopefully we'll have some good stories to tell but I volunteered to actually tow this trailer this trailer is going to be is going to house everything we're going to need as a troop all of our foot lockers cooking uh, flags canopies rain gear you name it it's going to be in this trailer I'm going to go ahead and tow it with the taco should be fine uh, when you are towing a trailer like this that is not yours, there is a long list of things you need to go over before you believe it is safe in order to tow it properly. Please go through some safety stuff. I am so sick and tired of you riding down the road and, hey, look, there's somebody's tire. Oh, look, there's a, you know, trailer just falls off. They didn't hook it up correctly. I've been there. I've done that. I have learned my lessons. I have taken my lickings. And please go through all these safety tips if you are borrowing somebody else's trailer don't trust their maintenance this particular trailer due to covid has been sitting underneath a tree for well over a year and a half because we couldn't go anywhere so now we're able to now we need to get back on the road first thing we're going to do is wash this thing this thing is nasty look at it it's green it's ah uh, yeah so we're gonna hit it, hit it with a pressure washer we're not gonna really dig down and clean clean but we are going to clean it off we're also going to be checking the tires. We want to be able to actually pull the tire off. Make sure that there's not a cut on the inside. Uh, there's not a, a nail in it or anything like that. Now's the time to fix it since you have a shop right here. So go ahead and go through all those. So um, also check all your lights. Make sure, crawl underneath it. Make sure all of your uh, wiring has not been chewed by rats or by rabbits or squirrels, whatever make sure it is good it, it is all set now this particular trailer does not have trailer brakes so you don't have to worry about that i actually thought about throwing some on kind of donating some parts set it up i do have a trailer brake on the tacoma uh, so that it will be a little safer trying to slow down uh, this is only a single axle trailer so make sure your tires are in good shape if they're old if they're dry rotted talk to the owner of the trailer go ahead and have them replaced help them out since you're borrowing it um, don't ride around with dry rotted tires. So many times I see gators out on the road. Gator is basically, you look at a big rig, they have recaps, you go over with a motorcycle or whatever, boom, gator, you're gonna crash and it's not gonna be pretty. So make sure you have that. Make sure it has registration, it has tags. All the paperwork is set up and ready to go. Also, get some information on the trailer before you even go. I know that this is a two inch ball. Don't try to use a one and seven eighths on a two inch hitch. It's not gonna work, it's gonna fall off, go through your tailgate, ruin your day or ruin somebody else's day. Make sure the chain, is the safety chains are actually in good shape. They're attached properly. Uh, 
I've seen it to where they had a bolt going through a hole in the safety chain. It was loose. It, it wasn't even finger tight. That could fall off. It could crash. Make sure you have locks. You have the pin that goes through the, the tongue. Kind of had a personal story on that one where uh, apparently it fell out. And it tipped up, pulled the lawnmower off, and went right through the back glass of my 4Runner. Boy, was I pissed off. Anyway, uh, we're going to go through some other little tidbits here and there, but let's get started. And these are the tools you're going to need to be able to service this trailer and at least check things out. All right, first thing you're going to need is a pressure washer. We're going to go ahead and clean, the, clean up the outside, make sure it is going to be streamlined straight down the road. You're also going to need to take the tire off. So we're going to need, we have a floor jack. I also have an impact driver to get the lugs off. And we also have impact sockets to be able to get the lugs off. We got to check tire pressure. So we got air hose, we got tire pressure, gauge. Also need to put the wheels back on so you have a torque wrench with proper uh, sockets. And also, you're gonna need a ladder. That thing is tall. All right, so we just put the floor jack underneath the tire, so now it is up off the ground. Before you actually take the lugs off, go ahead and wiggle the tire around. That will actually give you an indication about your wheel bearings. Uh, like I said before, this is not my trailer. I do not know the history on this thing, so let's check it. It rolls pretty good. That's a good sign. All right, so I just wiggle the back and forth. You kind of go this way, kind of go up and down, just to make sure that those bearings are actually in there and they're actually put in properly. Now, if you look in the center of this thing, it does have a zerk fitting. So we're just going to throw some grease in there and we're going to call that good. Um, now if I really didn't know this trailer and it looked extremely old, I would actually put, take the hub off and repack the bearings. But we don't need to do that right now. Make sure you have the proper socket or lug wrench in your vehicle just in case you have a flat. Alright, things you want to look at in here. Well, you can see that this has a uh, torsion bar type of setup for suspension. Um, not leaf springs, but it's a torsion bar. It works pretty well. It does have the brackets in the back for a brake if you wanted to put one on there. Uh, later on in the future, if we start pulling some heavy loads with this thing, we might actually put a brake on there just for safety. Also, you want to look at the face, the mounting face. Now, this is pretty rusty. What I'm probably going to do is just get a wire brush and just kind of, eh, kind of buzz that real quick just to get some of the rust off so that it will be nice and clean but this actually looks pretty well maintained except for the dirt it's a lot of dirt <laughs> anyway all right a couple of things you want to look for on the tire go around it and look for any kind of nails all right so this tire is actually pretty good shape it's actually been pretty well maintained you go and also they look actually fairly new, so I do not have to worry about dry rot. Um, all right, most of the time on the passenger side, always look at that tire even closer than the one on the driver's side. Only because most people that tow a trailer, most people that uh, tow this type of trailer, doesn't tow it all the time. So when they go around curves, that right side tire is gonna be in the, um, on the shoulder, and it's gonna get a lot more uh, wear and tear on the inside. So keep an eye on that because if you're going down the road and you get a cut in the side, you hit a bump, boom, you get a blowout, this thing's going to go crazy and then you're going to crash and you don't want to do that. So, so we're just going to clean this up. We're going to stick this guy right back on because it is in good shape. Also, make sure you wear your safety glasses. Alright, one other thing though, if you ever want to know how to properly put a tire on, I do have a video on that. I did it on the Super Sexy How Not. So check it out. Alright, always remember to torque your lugs. Don't rely on the impact, and actually I really 
don't like using the impact that often, but it does zip them in there pretty quick. Just don't ram them in there. Use a torque wrench. And on these right here, I'm gonna go with about 110 foot pounds. All right, tire's on, tire is torqued. Everything is good to go on this side. It's all been checked out except for tire pressure. Um, so let's see what we're at. Now it's been sitting for a year and a half. Woo. Wow, not bad, 48 PSI. Not bad, so I don't know how to fill this one up. It's actually a really good tire. Um, now look on the sidewall to see what your max pressure is and don't go over that. Now just know that since we're already just using regular compressed air, when this tire warms up, the pressure is going to go up. So keep that in mind. If you're ever in your late model vehicle and you have the wheel sensors, you turn them on, you go for a trip, and you're like, oh great, I'm at 36. Two hours later you look down, wow, I'm at 40. Because it expands and you're going to get a higher pressure. So leave some of that room in the tire for that expansion and don't go over it because blowouts suck. Anyway, let's go to the next one. All right, one thing that's very important that you check every time you go out, especially with somebody else's trailer, make sure they have a spare. Now this one does have a spare, it does have a cover on it and a lock, so make sure you do have the keys to that lock or else you're gonna be stuck on the side of the road trying to hope that you can get up with the owner so they can actually bring you the key. Luckily, this guy here had a combination lock and I do have the combination, but I'm not gonna tell you because it's not yours. And actually, since this is the American Legions, I can definitely trust these guys and girls to actually maintain this thing. And one thing that I know that they maintain, they actually got this thing balanced. That is going above and beyond. That is fantastic. I love those people. All right, while we're up here in the front of it, uh, we want to go ahead and inspect your jack. Now, a lot of these type of trailers have the jack actually protruding down there underneath. Now, it, you do that so when... Um, you don't have to crank it down so far. The only problem with that is when you go over bumps, uh, railroad tracks, stuff like that. If you have a low truck like I do, and actually this trailer is pretty low, and you wanna to try to keep it as level as possible. If you have it jacked up in the air, it could start fishtailing. If you have too much tongue weight, you could be fishtailing. You don't wanna have that, especially if you don't have trailer brakes. So keep an eye on that so you do not mess it up. Oh, excuse me. Also, make sure your vehicle is actually compatible with whatever plug that they have. This one right here is actually a seven pin plug. And what they do with this, the reason why I put this one up there, a seven pin instead of a four pin, is because they do have a battery set up inside that's actually pretty darn sweet. They got lights everywhere, they got fans, they have a USB charger, they have everything in there, and it is set up really nice. They did an awesome job with this. But make sure your truck is actually prepared to be able to use a seven pin. Now, both Jeeps, they only have four pins. The van only has a four pin. The Dodge has a seven pin, and also the Tacoma has a seven pin. Also, put, the, put this in the back of your trailer, uh, back of your vehicle, and make sure all your lights work. Your brakes, your running blinkers, both sides, hazards, and also brakes if you have them. Uh, quick story, Back in the day, I borrowed a trailer from a rental place. I plugged it in, and when I turned on my left turn signal, it applied the brakes. So they wired it up the way that they wanted to, and then they just sold or rented out for additional cost an adapter. You say, hey, you have a Chevy? Okay, here's your adapter. Oh, you have a, uh, a Chrysler? Here's your adapter. I think it was just a way of making more money. But you want to make sure before you go out that your wiring is wired up correctly. Okay, so also understand what kind of hitch do you have? This one right here, you pull up on it and you pull back. Then you're in disengage. Put it forward, lock it in the place. There are little clips back here. Now, this isn't this isn't enough. We need to have more. That's why they have a, a pin that by law you have to have this in. At least in North Carolina. Always put that in there. If this pops up, it comes off the ball right through your truck not a happy time like i said before check out your safety chains these are actually really good they have uh actually safety clips so when you put it on the back of your truck 
they don't fall off. All right, so one problem that I did have with this particular trailer when I picked it up was that the safety chains were way too long. So if they are long, you twist them up and then stick them on. Now, some people actually cross their, cross their chains. Some people don't. It's up to you. Uh, personally, I can go either way. Uh, some people cross them up so that both chains are actually uh, pulling at the same rate. If you don't, if your trailer is going this way, this one chain is going to be tight. Go this way, this chain is going to be tight. This way, both chains are tight. All right, tire pressure checked out, bearings checked out, wiring checked out, spare checked out. Tight, lugs are tightened, they are torqued. We're actually all pretty much on par. Uh, good job on the people who actually maintain this thing. I do you believe it might be Mr. Nate, Mr. Tony, all those guys from the troop? But it is in fantastic shape, and I'll be proud to actually tow it. Now, all right, we're pretty much done with the trailer. It is actually in really good condition. So I definitely feel confident towing it all the way up to scout camp. Now, a couple of things that you need to do is all your locks, make sure you just squirt a little bit of WD-40 in there. This thing's been sitting there for a long time. You gotta make sure you be, you're gonna actually unlock things when you need it, especially because most of the time you get to camp, is dark. I don't know how it happens, it always happens. It's always dark. All your hinges, grease them. Uh, if there's a Zerk fitting, throw some grease in it. Um, also, something that a lot of people actually neglect is actually put a little bit of grease on the ball. Maybe use a tennis ball to kind of cover it up so it doesn't get everywhere. Because if you rub against it on your clean pants, you're going to get pissed off. But anyway, uh, you want to keep that nice and lubricated. If it does get bound up, you're not going to be able to get that thing off. It's a pain in the butt. So just put a light grease coating on that and then you should be ready to go. So anyway, hopefully this kind of helps uh, when you're borrowing somebody else's trailer and you don't know the history. Go ahead and do your safety checks. Make sure it is ready to go and that you are safe because you are responsible for it. You're responsible for the other drivers, you're responsible for your rig, your trailer, everything. It's your responsibility, so take the responsibility and check it out. Anyway, enjoy it, Hope, hopefully this kind of helped. We'll come back and touch on a couple other little things later on. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you can actually enter into the contest July 4th, 2021. Gonna give away the Stars and Stripes and hopefully you'll be able to put it on your wall. Until next time, Check, check us out, and we'll see you later. Catch you later.